Hey guys, this is Wolf1617 here. I just wanted to redo this video. I guess from last time when I did this video, it wasn't very good. The audio was very loud and I apologize. So I'm going to go ahead and redo this video. I'm going to do it in a couple of um, different videos as well about how to go invisible as I am. I got a flashlight as you can see. Um, how to go invisible, how to place structures while you're invisible. So we're going to go ahead and get that. I got a little base set up here. It's not much, just a vehicle pad and a silo and my, of course, a sundoer because we're going to need that. Now there are two different ways to go invisible. Obviously the main one is an infiltrator cloak ability, which is a sniper type of unit or infantry, which is what I am currently at the moment. As you can hear me go cloak and decloak. So we're going to go ahead and get into our Sunday here. We're going to go ahead and deploy it. So the other way you can go about visibility is an implant. And let's go ahead and be a heavy assault. Just so I can show you. There's this implant that I got a while back. And it's called Minor Cloak Ability. Or Minor Cloak. And it just kind of gives you a little bit more details. Remaining stationary for 8 seconds will cloak the user, which is you movement will break this cloak though short bouts of movement would let you return the cloak more quickly after breaking it i'll show you what that means firing a weapon will reset the eight seconds recharge countdown now all the infantry class can get this implant so you got one here for the engineer same thing with the combat medic i normally just stick with counterintelligence because it's my favorite one but see the medic can also get one light assault can also get one and also the infiltrator can also get one as well but I don't really see a point of having it for the infiltrator just because you already have that ability so that just be a waste of a, a um, an implant slot you could use the max unit however does not have that implant because that'd be kind of a little OP this is what their max unit does have currently or at least what I have and um yeah the max unit does not have that ability so we're gonna go ahead and be a heavy assault and we're gonna go ahead and we will switch to our we will switch to the i don't know what gun to use really well just stick with the watchman why not i don't know if the watchman has a flashlight now if it doesn't look like the watchman has a flashlight we'll quickly get that equipped there good so to Oh, oops, I did not equip that ability. Let's just quickly go back. Oops, my bad. Um, there we go. We supply. And now you can see on the bottom of the screen of the um, your screen, you can see the little kneeling, the guy that's kneeling. That's how you know you have it. So we're going to just sit here for about eight, like it says, eight seconds. And you can move around like this. You can jump up and down. And you decloak for a second, then that, then you recloak. And that's what it means by a little small burst. And I also noticed that you can actually move quite a bit. Oops, not that much. All right, scoot up. But you can move, it's hard to tell, but you can, I don't know if you can see this, but you can move pretty well as long as you don't decloak like that. It takes a lot longer to get to wherever you need to here. Let's see if we can get a little bit yeah, I'll be like right here in front of this terminal so you can see it. But yeah, you can kind of see my gun. Like when I go up, you can see how blurry it is with that, this, the um, terminal thing is. But you can like go this way. You can wa As you watch my cross, it's moving a little bit. And you can still do that if you wanted to. Anyways, as you can see, I'm a heavy unit. And um, so when I activate my shields... Oh, I did not know that. I guess it... You, your shield kind of gives you away. Oh, that's really nice to know. So when you activate your shield, it kind of gives you away of that cloak ability. That is kind of actually unfortunate. <laughs> so, you know, there's ways to do that. Um, so when you're building something, let's just go ahead and grab our walls here. We'll gra grab the rampart wall. So the rampart wall, to place these w any building, the blue circle has to be below the ground. And the green circle has to be above the ground. See how you can see the green circle and then you don't. And then you can use the cloak ability or the infiltrator. I prefer to use the infiltrator class when it comes to going invisible just because 
then you can actually move around while you're cloaked compared to just a minor cloak ability. You just can't move around. So I'm going to go ahead and place the wall here. The bump, the right bumper is my um, placement button. I, I think it's the left button for you guys if you're on keyboard. Don't take my word for it, but I think that it is. Um, if not, it's the right button, one or the other. To slow down the, move me, the movement of your structures, you can see I'm going really fast. If you press the control, the CTRL button on your keyboard, you can see how quickly it just slows the building down a lot. And that really helps when you're trying to get the walls lined up. I've seen a lot of players do this. They they try to do this. No, they try to do this, and they try to get another wall lined up. And that's just it's much harder, much sorry harder to do. So we're gonna go ahead and place the building. We're gonna quickly walk around. See, you can see that I'm, I have that little thing in my hand, and go ahead and place the building. And there you go. And that is how you can place this, the wall structure or any structure that you want to place. Now let me show you what it's like when you're an infiltrator class. Again, I can go invisible. I don't have the mining cloak ability. I can decloak. And let's go ahead and get another wall. We'll go ahead and get this solid wall. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and get the shield module. I want to show you guys something. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put this here we're gonna go ahead and cloak when you cloak and decloak you don't have to decloak right away it takes about 10 seconds before you can't place the object so i'm gonna let it pass 10 seconds but you can see that it's gonna highlight the wall so the wall will be illuminated the windows will have like a shield on them and so now let's go ahead and try and place this object do you hear that oh hold on one second the alert just started do you hear that that didn't sound didn't right there I can't place it now if I was to reset this go ahead and cloak place the item go ahead and walk around and go ahead and place the item again and there you go and that's how you can get the structure to place it's very per it's very useful when you're trying to get the turrets lined up the repair modules and, and other things like that so let me just oops Wrong terminal. Well, yeah, let me just quickly get the turrets up quick. I'm not going to fast forward. A lot of people are telling me I should edit, but I don't do any of that. I'm just all old fashioned, I guess. So we're going to try and put the turrets in the triangle formation. For some reason, the turrets don't have a green or blue circle. I don't know why they should. I'm glad they finally brought that back like it should have been in the first place. And it was. Then they just stopped it. The developers, I mean. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put this. See, it has a blue circle there. The red line means you can't go past it. But we're gonna go ahead and place this to it here. I don't do this type of setup, by by the way, guys. Um, this is not the layout of the base I do. I never do it this way. I'm just doing it for the video so you guys can see. This triangle formation is what I do try to do when I do my bases. So we see this X. I call it X marks the spot. So I try to get the turret to be right in that area. So let's go ahead and cloak. Let's see how the two red lines just disappear. And I'm just going to raise this up a little bit. And there you go. And that's how you know that it's going to be very effective. If, because the closer the turrets are, the more turrets you can place. I did screw that up with the infantry turret. Normally I, I'd have it really low to the ground like I did with this turret. But at, at this point I just don't really care. Sorry, this video is taking so long, guys. But anyways, so let's go ahead and get our turret AI module. This is what activates the turrets. Now, this is when you really want to be an infiltrator. So see, okay, it's hard to tell, but this turret is highlighted green. See how I switch to a different um, inventory? Now, if I switch back to the AI module, it's going to be green. See how this turret's green, but this other one is not? Just once it highlights green, just like that, then you know the turret will be activated. Now... It, this is perfect if you got like let's say you got a Sunday garage right in the middle of all these turrets I, like I normally do then it'd be really this method is really nice because then you can decloak so you can see I got something in my, arm, in my hands here or in the game hands that's a joke 
And then just go ahead and decloak, but you can see that all these turrets will be activated. So like, let's say you got a Sunday garage here, something that's like big and it's out of way, and you can't see if another, if the other, if this turret will be activated or whatever turret that's the furthest away will be activated. Then, um, then you can do that method of going invisible, place down the AI module, have a walk around to see what's going on. You'll see me do that all the time with my bases and stuff. I'll get out of Sunday, turn right or left, whichever way the turret is set up, and to see if it's set up. And you got 10 seconds before you can't, um, before you have to reset the placement again. So let's go ahead and get a solid wall. Try to make a really quick video for you guys, but so go cloak. We see that this this wall is way too close to us, so to move this wall further and backwards from you, uh, you right click, which is your zoom button, and then you left click, which is your trigger button, and then you move your whole entire mouse around, not the not the scroll wheel, but the whole actual mouse. Um, device that you have around the mouse pad. That is how you can move the the walls in and out, objects, anything you're placing you can move in and out further, closer, whatever to whatever you want to do. Um, how you have, however way you want to set it up. And then I like to get these walls lined up just like this. Try to deny the enemy from being able to shoot at anything on the inside of the walls. Man. And I know this wall is going to be pretty good. Not perfect. It's never going to be perfect, but. And I prefer the solid wall, but there's pros and cons between these two walls, and I'll show you in a minute. Go ahead and place the item. Look how beautiful that looks. And just walk around, see if you like it. If you like it, go ahead and place the object or the, the wall. And now you completely den deny the enemy from shooting right here. So you could really put down a module right here with the flashlights facing. Or aiming at, and then you and you don't have to worry about anybody shooting through these cracks. The only thing you got to worry about is this little gap here with the light assault. But again, there's really nothing you can do except just try to defend your base. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the repair module. Anything that's green will show that the repair module will repair whatever it is in range. Like that turret just highlighted. If I walk farther away, it won't. Now it's highlighted. For some reason, this solid wall up here does not show green. Just like the rampart wall here did. See how it's showing green and now it's not. So what I like to do is, do you see how the green line is kind of like, is towards the bottom of the wall now? And now it's like going kind of like a rainbow, I guess, going over. Right about there is how I know for sure that that wall will be repaired. So like if this rampart wall highlights green, you can move about right here. If you really want to be on the safe side, go ahead and cloak, place the item, or pretend you can place the item. Go ahead and decloak, and you can see, oh yeah, for sure that wall is going to be completely repaired. And there you go. Now, for the final thing about the um, the walls, let me pull a lightning armor piercing tank, which is very good against anything that has really heavy armor. If you don't believe me, I will go ahead and show you. The Python AP is loaded with fast moving armor piercing rounds that are strong against armor targets like buildings, tanks, vehicles, air units, etc. Um, against armor targets but have little explosive yield. All factions can use this weapon. So it's good against anything that's strong, but it's not really good against infantry. Like it doesn't have a blast um, AOE effect like a like a hash does. You can still kill infantry units. It's just it's harder. So let me show you the thing here. So with the shield module, which is this, you can go ahead and activate it. It will it will illuminate the this rampart shield here. I mean the rampart wall. And it will make it so it's invulnerable for 30 seconds. That's a perfect time to um, repair it. Same thing with the garage, the sunny garage, the blast wall, the uh, rampart wall, and the uh, pillbox and infantry tower will all be the same, will take the same effect from the shield module. The rampart, I mean the solid wall, the ramps, 
Uh, oh, and also Bunkus. I forgot to mention Bunkus as well. They can take their... They will also be invulnerable too. The only thing that's not going to be invulnerable by the shield module are um, obviously the vehicles, the silo, the uh, vehicle pad, the turrets, the modules, and um, anything that's not... Those are going to be the ones that are not going to be powered up by the shield module and also the air terminal. And all the modules, vehicle dispenser, ammo, thingy, air pad, all sorts of stuff. Well, like those things will not be eliminated. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot this wall. You can see that I'm getting um, deemed for hitting our own ally structures. That little that circle with, um, with the, the circle line, whatever. Now, also, I'm going to shoot this wall. Okay, same thing. Now, what happens when I activate the shield module? Just watch this. So, it has a 30 seconds where everything's invulnerable. Then, it has a 30 seconds, I think, or 45 seconds cooldown before you can do it again. Now, I'm going to go ahead and shoot this wall. And now, I'm not, I'm not damaging this wall at all. It's hard to tell, so I'm going to try and drive around. Mainly can tell on the other side. But see how it gets really red. And now if I hit this wall, that wall takes damage. Now if I keep hitting this, watch when the red disappears. See now the red part, the illuminated part is gone, and now this wall will take damage. So that's what the purpose of the shield module is. So it just depends on where you're at. I mean I mainly I used to hate the rampart wall with you have windows and stuff just because I hated the stairs and I like the solid wall because it's taller they're both the same length I did did a test on that I didn't publish it on YouTube yet but they're, they are exactly the same length it's really hard to test them but um, they are the same length but the solid wall is taller but this wall is shorter but it does provide the shield ability for 30 seconds now if you got a module and it's kind of hard it depends on what terrain you're at but if you got a shield module, like, like right about, probably like right, and I'll just get out. <laughs> if you have a, another shield module, like right here, and you got one a little bit, like right over here, and then if, if you activate one, and they both, let's say both of the shield modules are activating these two walls, like they're just building rings, one could be activating, and the other one could be on a cooldown, so when that second one that's on a cooldown is ready to activate, the first one go on cooldown, so you can literally just have an unlimited supply of, um, not only supply, but just, you could defend your base a lot longer, because both w rampart walls, let's pretend this is a rampart wall, which is this wall right here, with the windows, let's just say that both of them just constantly getting powered by the shield module, the only downside is you're the only one that can control the shield module. Your allies can't do it for you. Your tribe, squad mates cannot do it for you either. Your outfit members cannot do it for you. You are the only one that can activate these two walls. I can't tell you how many times I see a shield module like probably where this is at right here and I don't see anybody powering it up. And I'm like, well, this base is going to go down real quick. And it does because they're not there to power it up. So it's like there's no point of having it except for like providing shields to the windows. So now I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct this whole base because I don't want someone to get free points and taking this base down. But I really hope that helps you guys on how to go about cloaking and decloaking. Hopefully it answers you guys' questions. If, it, if it's not helpful, I don't really know how else to go in details. Um, but I really hope it helps. Sorry about the audio in a previous video that I made about this. but And also at least this time it's daytime. The other time when I was making this, it was night time, so it's really hard to do the video. Even with the gamma settings completely maxed up and brightness, I still was having a hard time trying to upload the video and make the video and stuff. But hopefully this helps. Hopefully you guys like it. Um, it's I would recommend going to Infiltrator class when it comes to building, then, it, then going with the Minor Cloak ability. Minor Cloak is good and bad. Same thing with the Infiltrator class. But I can't tell you how many times, like when I'm trying to place an object, and I'm like right here, invisible, and an enemy player just walks right next to me, and I'm like, crap, I got a wall that I'm about to place, and, he, and he's in my way, so I can't place it. And so I'll quickly just aim, 
Boom, boom. Take him out. Qu quickly cloak. And quickly try and place my wall. Can't tell how many times I've taken players down. Because they're like, they see a base, like, oh, cool, there's a silo here. Let's go ahead and try to, you know, see what's going on. And then all of a sudden they don't expect the builder to take out the player. You know what I mean? So it's a really cool way to, you know, go on a very quick aggressive when you're um, trying to build your own base. So hopefully that helps you guys. If you guys have any more questions, leave a comments down below. And again, I hope this helps. And I really appreciate you guys' um, opinions and what you guys think. And one more qu uh, thing I want to say, if you're going to build a base, try to look for this kind of rock here, because then you can put a sunder or a garage right here, and be able to put have that as back part of the back of a wall. If you want more ex explanation about the sunder or garage, which I call the main core setup, I'll be more than happy to do another video of that. I did do a video about that about mm, sometime this year, I think like six months ago, give or take. Um, but I'll be more than happy to do another video of that, like how to look for these kind of rocks. If you really want me to use this rock, I could probably could try, but we are really close to the border of where the warp gate is. You can see it right there that I'm shooting at. Oh, that was a really nice shot, actually. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll be more than happy to do another video of how to use these type of rocks right here for your Sunday garage. So again, thank you guys for everything. Appreciate you guys watching and let me know what you guys think of this video and hopefully it's a lot better on um, explaining why I think it's best to go with an infiltrator class uh, when it comes to placing down um, your structures. So right now I'm on SMA at the moment just because there's one that was open and it was a lot quieter. So that's why I wanted to be here. So cool. Peace out guys. I appreciate everything. It's Wolf1617. Thank you guys for everything. Peace out.